I left the USDA to come and, and battle these chronic infections, these biofilm infections. And long story short, I think we've made revolutionary changes in just the past couple years that will uh, have long-term ram ramifications on biofilm infections in general, but especially in, in the wound care and getting rid of the biofilms that, that create the recalcitrance of the wounds. What we found is that it's a very definitive universal boundary to this healing process and that being the biofilm, the bacteria, the fungi, the yeast that are in these things. So our first goal there was to identify what's there, what's there and how much. And then ultimately, how can we apply both the biofilm-based wound care, develop new diagnostics to tell us what's there and then identify therapies that would combat what we're finding in those wounds. And uh, again, long story short there, the biofilm-based wound care principles work very nicely and by themselves improve the healing trajectory of chronic wounds. Then when we apply diagnostics and we're able to actually see and know what the bacteria, what the fungi are in each individual wound, then we can target, say, systemic therapies and specific therapies toward that. And then cut to where we are now, we have targeted therapies that are specific, patient specific. And so we identify what's in the wound, what ratio the bacteria, the fungi are in, and then we can have a targeted therapy for that. So we've gone from, and these are uh, very uh, good numbers actually, a wound that would have otherwise taken 166 days to progress toward healing we can now get healed in about 46 days. That's a dramatic improvement, and that, that just goes to show what biofilm-based wound care, accurate diagnoses of a biofilm infection and patient-specific targeted therapies can do. Uh, certainly there are what we would consider major pathogens that occur in a, and let's take chronic wounds as an example. Um, what we, what we find there is that there's your Staph aureuses, your Pseudomonas aeruginosus, there's, there's your major pathogens, things people, when they see the name, when they get the diagnosis, they go, oh, I know what to do about this. Um, is there a commonality among chronic wounds? Well, the opposite is just the case. Uh, every chronic wound we've looked at has a different profile, a different set of pathogens, different organisms that group together in these chronic wounds. And we've, we've, we've kind of uh, simplified that because it's a huge diversity. And we've, we've put it into what's called a functional equivalent pathogroup. And so what we're considering there and building the cases for these things is that groups of pathogens can get together and as a consortium, as a synergistic group, they can create a pathogen-like pathogen system with the host. And Ultimately, what you're getting is different types of organisms grouping together and their genetic content contributes or equals to a functional pathogen. And that's, that's kind of the very nebulous, futuristic approach we're taking is that you can't just look for the one thing in, in a lot of these types of chronic infections because they're multiple organisms, they're polymicrobial. So you really have to take the whole into account and you can't discard one member of the group because a textbook somewhere has defined it as a commensal organism. Well, most of the pathogens we know of were at one time considered commensal and then they were considered, considered opportunistic pathogens and they slowly became known as pathogens, primary pathogens. And there's, there's many examples of this. And so as an example, and probably answering one of the future questions, uh, we're coming to find that Carinibacterium, which is often considered a uh, what uh, traditional diagnosis may consider a uh, contaminant or a commensal flora, we're finding that these are very predominant in chronic wound infections, the biofilm infections of chronic wounds. And if we can knock down the Carini bacterium, the wound gets better. What we have found, and we screened 
maybe a thousand different wounds. I think the number was 915 different chronic wounds. And 23% of those had a very significant yeast component. And so the, the fungi are important components of the polymicrobial makeup of biofilm infections. And indeed in wounds, 23% of the 915 we looked at had a fungal component. And this is 25% uh, of the total microbial composition and above. Many of these chronic wounds had 95% yeast versus bacteria. So we can't really assume that bacteria are causing chronic wound recalcitrance. We have to take into account that fungi can be a major component of those. We were talking about the, the net result of these new modern molecular diagnostics. And so in terms of a polymicrobial infection, a biofilm infection of a wound, we can look at each wound individually and tell what the, what the makeup of that, that wound is. And it's so inexpensive now to do molecular and we're able to identify all of the bacterial components, all of the fungal components, and we're able to give a, what you might consider an ecological picture of that polymicrobial infection. And on the back end of that, we then have interpretations which basically give out treatment options similar to what a resistance and a susceptibility profile, but it's sorted according to those treatments which will affect the majority or the highest percentage of that, that polymicrobial population. And so we've combined molecular, modern molecular technologies to modern bioinformatics and basically have, are able to define a polymicrobial infection. So when, when, I, when I approach this, I want to make it irrelevant, whether it's bio burden, biofilm, colonization. What we're trying to do is say what bacteria are there. We're trying to define a polymicrobial infection and define a targeted therapy to treat that infection. That in itself makes the term biofilm irrelevant to the patient. We don't need to convince clinicians that it's biofilm. That's, that's, that's a circular argument. Um, if they want to call it, if clinician X wants to call it bio burden, we are diagnosing the bio burden and giving them a way to prevent that bio burden from continuing to, to impair the, the wound from healing on a positive trajectory. If they want to call it biofilm, that's great they want to call it colonization, or if they just want to call it an infection. All those terms are, are meaningless to the patient and to that patient getting better. And that's kind of the approach we wanted to, to bring it. We wanted to make it operator independent. Treat, treat the wound in this way, diagnose it in this way, and target what you're identifying with the diagnostics and personalize that, that, that therapy and ultimately the patient is going to benefit from this approach. Do, do we know it's biofilm in these chronic wounds? Yes. Does it matter that everyone doesn't want to call it biofilm? I don't, obviously it doesn't. 